Hey, it's Mark Podolsky, The Land Geek, with your favorite niche real estate website, www.thelandgeek.com. And for this week's roundtable, we've got hashtag Team Eric, Eric Jotnot Pro Peterson. Eric, how are you? I'm good. Happy to be here, Mark. I'm really scared that you're here because he, he listened to the podcast that he wasn't on before boot camp, and there were a couple comments in there that rubbed Eric the wrong way. And we didn't know it until just a few minutes ago, Eric's got a little fang right here and he doesn't show it a lot, but we're about to see the fang come out. So I'm excited for this podcast. (laughs) The Facebook whispers on David Benalis. How are you? I'm wonderful. Great to be back. Great to be back. It's, it's great to see you. And, uh, the big Papa Tate Litchfield. How's it going Tate? I'm doing really well. Thanks. You, you look too good for this to have like a newborn, like yeah. too much sleep. I got to call Alice and be like, wake up Tate at three in the morning more. Yeah, that would not, uh, that wouldn't do us any well. So let's, uh, let's stay away from that. Oh, we'll stay away from that. All right. And then, you know, him, you love him. Scott Todd from scotttodd.net. Today's podcast is sponsored by landmoto.com, which is by the way, crushing all of the land sites. So if you are listing on landsofamerica.com, landflip.com, landandfarm.com, save your cash and just go to landmoto.com because it's getting sales. So today's podcast, again, sponsored by landmoto.com. And don't forget about postingdomination.com forward slash land geek. Scott Todd, how about that for a commercial? I love it, Mark. Love it. Thanks. Uh, thanks. No worries. So let's get into our first pain point. David Benalis, what's yes. going on? Um, I had a VA. Um, I gave them, an, so they are my title search VA. So I kind of, you know, split up due diligence a little bit. You know, some people have one person for everything. I take two people. So one person does easy stuff like taxes, screenshots of the property. The other person is a, um, a specialist for title chains. So they're my go-to. Worked with them for about a month and a half, uh, going on two months. And I sent them another property, and they're like, uh, I cannot do this work, sir. I'm sorry. As soon as I hear the word can't, without a decent explanation, it's time to find somebody else. Well, I applaud you for being quick to fire. But we should have been slower to hire. So how did this person even get the job in the first place? Um, so I put up an ad on Upwork. Um, I like putting up ads early in the day, my time, so that I know they're awake in the middle of the night and that they would work those hours so it's easier to communicate with them. So um, I hired about two days after the post went up, had about 40 applicants, filtered it down, interviewed about three people. Um, I gave them all a parcel each to uh, do the title search on, and he got it back the quickest, so got the job. And then I heard that big C word, which I do not like, the word can't. That's enough for me to not want to work with him. Well, not, not a lot to to you know pick, <laughs> pick apart there i think i think you hired beautifully uh eric peterson i think this is bad luck what, what do you think yeah i think it's just unfortunate you know it, it definitely happens um you know you just have to be prepared and have your processes in place to to be able to go back and and bring someone else in or a group of people to try out and, and choose the best one right yeah i'd be curious eric what percentage of your VAs do you train and then find out later, oh, this person, you know, is not doing the job as hired and I'm just, I got to rehire someone for that task or job? Um, you mean like after that initial phase of kind of like a trial period? Yeah, after the, after the trial period um, and then they just don't work out. Yeah, I mean, that's that's rare at that point. If they made it through the trial point with me, um, usually at that point, they know what they're doing and, and they're doing a good job, uh, which is why I kept them around. Uh, what happens more often is, is, like David said, you know, just out of the blue, you get that email saying, you know, my last, you know, week is this week and I can't do anything more or, or you know, whatever it might, might be. Um, that's, that's happened to me on a, a number of different occasions and Oftentimes, you know, it's a, a VA you really like, and it, it's disappointing. But if you've got um, your systems in place, it's it's not that hard to go find a replacement. 
Yeah, I mean, basically from what David said, it just seems like he's just copy and paste that ad back on Upwork and start the process again, um, which is a wonderful system. Tate Litchfield, what, uh, what about you? How often are you working with a, a, a VA and they just don't work out and you got to rehire a new VA? You know, if they're not going to work out, I tend to realize that within the first uh, week or two that they're not qualified or that their heart's not in it. Um, I'm kind of a tough guy in those initial weeks. And then after that, I soften up a little bit. But I want to make sure that they are going to do what they said they are and that they can do it well in a timely manner. And so if they can't deliver in those first, you know, the probationary time period, uh, then unfortunately, we don't have space for them here. Yeah, one one of my uh, my favorite teachers in high school used to say like the like the joke was, you know, if we started school in in let's say September, the the big joke was, you know, he wouldn't crack a smile until you know December. So he really set the tone of that class was you know, like I expect this and I expect that and I expect that and like there's you know I'm not going to soften until I see like these expectations are met. And then I'll crack a smile like in December. Um, speaking of someone who never cracks a smile, Scott Todd, uh, what about your experiences? I mean, why, why smile, man? That, that, that means you're too soft. Come on. The compassionate Scott Todd, I know you crack a smile. I'm smiling right now. I know. And, and look, if anybody goes to flight school, they know I smile all the time. I like to tell little jokes. I like to tell how, like, when I started the business, I had a lot of hair, you know, like you should do. <laughs> but, you know. No, I think yeah, that, but if they um, don't mail in flight school, you got the bat. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't don't mess with the bat. Don't don't mess with saying no. And I don't like my surveys messed with either. So, <laughs> um, <laughs> hey, so uh, essentially, you, you know, I think that I think the thing is is that um, you you know, it, it's kind of hard to hear the someone tell you no, right? Like it's hard it's hard when you're paying someone for them to tell you no. And, um, you know, I, I think that that's why, like, for me, what I want to do is I want to make sure I have a team of people that are like hungry for that work, right? Like the, the way I envision my VAs working is, you know, I, I take like a piece of steak and I throw it down into the, to the lion's cage. And when they see it, the hungriest of hungry want to like, like jump on it. And so it looks, maybe some people aren't hungry sometimes, but then it doesn't mean that they're bad. It just means that they're not necessarily hungry. Uh, so what I like to do is I like to have a team there that I can just toss the work to and say, Hey, whoever, whoever gets it going, gets it going. And, uh, I think that's a good, good way to handle it so that you're not dependent on one individual person, you know, like make, make them compete against each other all the time. Life's all about competition. Uh, I, I love it. I love it. Um, you know, I would, I would recommend to David, there's a new service out there with trained VAs at the ready. It's just go to vas.thelandgeek.com. We are coming out of beta. We're taking 10 new clients, uh, I think, in the next week or two. So, um, David, you might want to check that out and just compare, right? It's just month to month. See if they you perform. Would, I would like to do that just so I can have more information and talk about the program and give it some raving reviews because, you know, if Danielle is the one who head that up, I'm sure it's going to be top notch. Well, it is, it is, I can tell you that the people in beta are our most difficult and persnickety of coaching clients. <laughs> so, and they're, they're loving it. So not, you know, not a lot to, uh, to say so, but, but, you know, you know, taking on a few clients versus 10, let's see how that goes. You know, will the systems break? Will they be able to, you know, communicate effectively? I don't know. Um, I, but I can tell you that uh, before we started the program, I had no gray hair and now I've got tons. So <laughs> it does, it does concern me a bit that this is scalable, but we'll see. We'll see. Um, I am optimistic that, um, we can scale it. So, um, yeah, no worries. So I'm pretty sure that gray hair came from geek pay, nothing to do with the VA program. <laughs> oh, oh, no, no. Now he uh, hits you below the belt, Mark. Wow, like, oh boy. man. I'll tell you what, man, Eric, wow. That was the first time Eric punched back. The thing, I, I mean, the like, thing came out. He just like he like slowly delivered the punch to you, and then you felt it. Like, it hit you, and then like ten seconds later, we all felt it. 
<laughs> uh, you know, you know, was, I, I think that punch was so hard. Like my whole family felt it. <laughs> I think so, right? Three generations later, we'll feel it. Three generations oh, later, like, like my kids are gonna come home, like, like all with like raging headaches. Like, yeah, <laughs> Eric Peterson went there, guys. Um, oh no, Eric, 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 just like went like it's almost like in Back to the Future when you know, like when the movie starts and Biff is like, you know, like, <laughs> Biff is like low level. And right. then, you know, like the McFly family is higher, but then in the future, it's like reversed. He just reversed you, man. <laughs> no, uh -huh. You know what I'm, I'm doing right now is I'm actually going to Voxer and having Danielle send Eric a geekpay.io t-shirt uh, uh -huh. that he'll have to wear. But like, but in all fairness, Eric does owe me a, a video testimonial. I, I do. I do. It, it is working, Eric. <laughs> It is. It's but definitely it, working. I just know the stress that you're under it from is, it. That's, it is a that's lot of stress. That's the point of my comment. Yeah, no, so, it's, it's very stressful. It's, it's awesome, actually. Yeah. Great. So, the so thank you. Hey, don't walk that back, Eric. You meant it. <laughs> well, he, I mean, but Eric's, just, Eric's a, you know, he, he knows software. He understands how, how difficult it is to execute on that stuff. That's yeah. fine. So, and, and, that, and, and, and if anyone told me, like, oh, by the way, um, a SaaS product is a, a tremendous stressful headache that never ends. Um, I might not have done it. So it just shows you what, what blind enthusiasm can do for you. <laughs> well, yeah. But, but one day it, it, it'll get to hey, no, uh, no note setup fees. It's great. <laughs> no note setup fees. It is no, no. I mean, look, you know, at least, at least we're not giving up 10, 2% of our business. Um, on ACH to another company. When you're doing two million a year, jeez. Well, that's that's <laughs> just through August, by the way. Damn, yeah, yeah. mic drop, mic yeah, drop, mic drop. So, um, let's talk about uh, the the aftermath of our squatter issue, Tate Litchfield. All right. So the attorney emails us today, and go ahead and tell the story. Yeah, we get uh, what's well, been. I'm sure all of our listeners remember the the backstory here. Basically, we had a guy who was financing a property from us, and he wanted to use the land for something that he wasn't allowed. The county wouldn't approve his buildings, and so he decided to go ahead and build anyways, which uh, caused us a lot of confusion, a lot of headache, had the neighborhood up in arms. You know, they were marching down the street with their pitchforks, and it wasn't good. And But this guy called Donald Trump, President Donald Trump, and... <laughs> You know, that didn't solve anything either. So eventually we had to get an attorney involved to get him off the land. And today we got an email from that attorney saying um, squatters are gone. However, they've left behind a trash pit and, and the area wants it cleaned up. So that's kind of where we're at now, Mark. Um, yeah. And, and, you know, and I have no uh, illusions about who's paying for that wall. We're oh, yeah. paying for that wall. Like. <laughs> You know, we, we could not get someone else to pay for it, unfortunately. Yeah. So we're left with this situation. Uh, I know a few of the people on here, Eric's dealt with this before. Scott, I'm pretty sure you've had to clean up trash. Uh, just, just humor me here, guys. What did it cost you to get somebody to come out there, haul away all that trash and clean it up? Eric? More than I wanted to pay. Uh, um, not what I, I, I was hoping I could get it done for um, like 200 bucks, honestly. Um, I think I ended up paying uh, 300 or 350. Okay. So, and it was, it was a lot of trash to clean up. So, I mean, I think it was worth it, but. All right, Scott. 2.1 million, Tate, 2.1 million. 2.1 million. <laughs> Larry H. Parker. <laughs> no, That's no, it was, it was about a thousand dollars. I paid about a thousand dollars. We don't have any idea what kind of goodies he left behind us, but um, I mean, who, who do I even call? Like Craigslist, man. Put a Craigslist gig. Craigslist, Craigslist, gig? Craigslist yeah. gig. That's what I did. Go and count. Mark, Facebook buy sell group. Here's what yeah, you do. That'll you, work. you first, you go on there and you're like, hey, free, whatever's on the property, free. Okay. And then you get people out there like scavenger hunting, right? But you, you make a rule that says, hey, you can go out there, you can get whatever you want for free. You just have to send me your email address so I know you're going out there. And then like a week later, you send them an email saying, how would you like to buy the land? Oh, yeah. 
That's Mike good. Boom. Boom. I'm on. Damn. We already are going to be contacting the neighbors who were so upset about the guy being there in the first place. And I'm sending them a letter that says, hey, unless you want this to happen again, somebody better buy this. <laughs> nice. Yeah. yeah. Nice. That's I good. It. I love it. Before um, or after the cleanup. Yeah. Oh, you should uh, do it before, man. You should do it before. before. Let them clean it up. Yeah. Like, yeah. yeah. Let, them as, be the as Let them be the hero. Yeah. Yeah. Do it before. It's a great idea. Yeah. Okay. So, David, you haven't had to deal with trash yet? No, but like I've been in construction for uh, a couple of decades now, and I know what a big trash truck would require. And I can imagine the, the mess it left behind. Something like that will probably cost about 800 Like You don't realize how much it costs to clean up trash until you have to do it. All right. All right so, this well, whole adventure with attorney fees and trash is going to cost about 1400 Yeah. Ooh. Uh, well, concern, I mean, hopefully not that much. Hopefully, we get like not that much trash and we get like 250 for Eric Peterson, but we'll resell the property. We'll get our money back. But here's the thing. Quickly. I mean, we bought the property for a thousand bucks. He put 500 down, lived on, he made payments for I think four or five months. So technically we've broken even or we're right around that price point. So yeah, it's going to, you know, it's no, uh, it's not a cherry, but uh, I mean, there are worst case scenarios for this. No, I mean, look. 1400 you know, bucks. That's the cost of like one flooded bathroom, right? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> yeah, exactly. I mean, that's what I was going to say. Like, let's, let's put things in perspective. I've been doing this since 2001. This is my first time having to haul trash and deal with a squatter. So, you know, I've got buddies who are in the landlord business. They're dealing with this stuff every weekend. It's just a cost of doing business. If so, nothing else, it yeah. made for good, uh, for good radio, right? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's, it's worth the story. Yeah. So, so you're exactly. welcome, audience. You're, you're welcome. <laughs> I feel, yeah. You're, you're welcome, Land Geek Nation. If someone's so, listening to this right now, don't let that be a reason why you don't get into this business, by the way. Oh, my gosh. What's going to happen if there's a trash in my property? No, nah, this doesn't happen. I've never had it happen to me. Yeah, it's, it's really, really rare. These, these things that, you know, these, these sort of nightmare scenarios are really, really rare. Um, so like they're, black swan events. They're easy, easy to solve, really. I mean, it, it doesn't take much to resolve these issues, you know? Yeah, I mean, it's not like Tate and I have to fly out there and solve yeah. them ourselves either. Oh, no, so. we'll just, you know, post a gig on Craigslist. We'll uh, get Posting Domination to work for us yet again and get like 100 ads out this afternoon <laughs> and boom, we're done. <laughs> Boom. Love how's, it. That? Love how's that for a little bit of a discreet, you know, a little yeah. marketing ploy? I love, I love it. domination. I'll just be the first to say it. I'm waiting for my t-shirts. <laughs> Scott's hot is smiling right now, audience. Scott's hot is smiling. Yeah, Scott, I, where's the, where's the merch? I'm gonna get where's the Land Moto job. merch? Where's the, the posting domination merch? I've got oh, my right, Team right. Tate merch. He's about right to here. become another meme from that. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thanks, Tate. Yeah, me, the memes. Yeah, me, me and my Pat. You know, Twenty a day keeps Scott. Maybe I need to show the the current flight school that picture and like scare them into. Maybe that's what I should do. It's like I think you should send him an email with nothing written, just that attached. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. And if you're listening to this and you have no idea what flight school is, go to landgeek.com forward slash training and get on a call with David and Mike. They'll walk you through it. So uh, we're at the end of August now. August is historically our worst month in this business. Every month is good, but August always tends to be slow. I think it's back to school. I'm not sure. It could be just the vacation uh, hangover for people that go away June and July and you know, they spend all that money and then they don't want to spend money in August. Uh, let's go around and hear our August status report. Eric Peterson, August, how was it? Um, August was pretty decent for me. I mean, uh, July actually turned out to be a slower month for me. Um, so August I sold six properties. All right. And Sorry. enterprise value of those properties? Um, close to 60,000. Okay. We'll take it. That'll pay for like, you know, one of the t-shirts you'll be sending me later. Um, yeah. <laughs> David Benalis, how about your August? My, so 
I, I think it was in a coffee talk or at one of these we did in, in July coming into August, right? I said uh, I would be doubling down both on refining my systems and, you know, going for just going for it on sales. So I had seven sales and enterprise value of around, I think it's about 85,000. I got to check the spreadsheet, but it's in that area. So it was a great month. I, I love August. Bring August. I want August every single month. Yeah, I'll tell you what. It's one eleven here and humid. Don't give me August, everyone. <laughs> All right. Well, at least there's parking. It's okay. Yeah. Well, yeah. Exactly. And so Dave and I have a long-standing joke about he's in LA and I'm in I'm in Phoenix and he's always hazing me about the weather. I'm like, well, at least I can find good parking. <laughs> so, Scott Todd, how about your August? We've had uh, 10, 10 sales in the month of August so far, and uh, enterprise value just over a hundred thousand. So Sweet. not, not as bad as last year. Uh, not as not my best month, but, uh, you know, I think that it was much better than July. July was, July was not as good as August. Is that funny? So, well, yeah. but you took, didn't you take July off? Uh, no, I mean, I, you work no, 10 days. I mean, don't you take every day? Five I work days. 10 Basically. hours, 10 hours. I, I'm, I'm working less and less. It seems like, you know, like, right. You know, I, I don't know. All right. Tate Litchfield, how was, how was our August? You know, August, it was consistent with uh, every other month this, this year. Looking at the trend, we did 17 sales, uh, right around $100,000 in enterprise value. So, Not bad. Not, not bad. bad at all. So August wasn't so horrible. Um, how was our July compared July. to August? Was July slower? July was slower. That's that 25000 $25,000 slower. Wow. So only 75,000 in July. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, year to date, Tate, we're at, we're at about 2 million. Yep. All right, Scott, where are you at? Team Scott. Well, are, I didn't know we were going by enterprise value this we're, year. I thought we were going yeah, because, by because last year we didn't want to do volume. We didn't, we didn't want to count your little $200 flips. Hey, Amen. So, know, uh, so, <laughs> Enterprise value is is just over a million dollars through August, and that's, uh, look, that's great though. Yeah, and a hundred, hundred and f right at one hundred and fifty deals so far this year, and um, September, October, November, December are typically historically over the last two years extremely strong for me. Yeah, so you'll catch up, and we'll still you know, win. But I mean, we'll still win. But it's what well, it depends it's, on what the measurement is. It doesn't matter what the measurement is. How many hours are you working? <laughs> uh, Damn. Uh, oh. Okay, well, like three. Three you know, But the thing is, like, if you're listening to this, yeah. like, I, you know, comparison is the thief of happiness. Um, I, think, I really think the metric for success should be how many offers are you making a day? How many ads are you getting out a day? And then at the end of the day, you can feel really proud of that and you'll get to that level of, you know, what we call success is really not success. It's just the byproduct of the effort that we're putting in. I mean, Eric had a great month, but he's doing this part-time. David had a great month, but he's doing this part-time. I don't even know what Scott does every day. So, you know. You know <laughs> I don't even know what I do any every day. And Tate's riding his bike. So, you know, when you, when you compare the freedom and flexibility with the effort, um, you know, we're all a success. And uh, you've got to really pay attention, I think, to that to what your metric is for success should be only things you can control. We can't control how many sales we're going to get a month, right? Some will, some won't. So what? Someone's waiting, right? That's right. David? That's so I think I really, right. I really think that's the attitude you should have because I know when I, you know, I go on to like other podcasts or I hear other people like, Oh, you know, I made 10 million this month. It's like, Oh, I, I like, I didn't make 10 million this month. Like, but maybe their lives are miserable. Right? Maybe their their spouses never see them. Maybe they're traveling all the time. Maybe their kids hate them, but they did ten million. Like, is that your metric for success? Right? I don't know. Scott Todd, am I get am I going on a rant here? You no. Know, I, I mean, like, I, I was at the uh, I took my my uh, daughter to the dentist the other day, and and they were processing the payments, and they had like a stack of bills, not bills, checks. They were like this big, and my daughter's like, man, look at all those checks. It's a lot of money, and I'm like, yeah, it's a lot of money. And she's like, uh, I'm like, but you know what? She's like, what? I'm like, the, the expenses of this place, this rent alone is huge. It's, it's at the mall basically, right? Like it's, this place is the mall. 
dental equipment, uh, insurance, staff to process these payments. You know, she's sitting there cutting the, uh, processing these checks. Yeah, it feels good to bring home this much money. But then by the time everything's said and done with, it's probably like this much money. And then the poor dentist is stuck in the office all day, all day, like all, all day. day. I guarantee you she didn't see the clips. I guarantee you she's, uh, she's accounted for every, every minute of her time during the day as opposed to like me. I'm like, I'm not quite sure where I, where I ate lunch yesterday. Who cares, <laughs> right? Well, that's it, it wasn't Panera Bread, by the way. Yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, it was probably first watch because they know you by name. It, it was oh. not that either. It wasn't? What was it? No. Uh, yesterday was a place in my neighborhood called uh, Hungry Greek, a Greek restaurant, Mark. And it's, it's not wow. a chain of a thousand, is it? No, man. It's oh, like okay, the good. only place. Look can, we, can we pause right here and just say, wait a minute, Scott, you ate ethnic food? Oh, oh okay. <laughs> All right. I see where we're going, David. I know, I know it was between us, but don't worry. Don't worry. The gloves are coming off next don't. time. You, you'll feel... <laughs> That that was your McGregor moment right there. Oh no! Oh, <laughs> oh no! Oh. We got to go ten rounds of a boring fight. <laughs> oh no! That no 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 no! You, you only oh, get one. Man. Oh god! Oh, that was it. I'm I'm still oh, reeling man. from Eric's punch to the head. Yeah, see, I can barely think straight. So you know, it's funny though. I I was at a party on Friday night, and I'm talking to this guy. He's a periodontist, and I'm asking him about his day, and he's like, I get up at four in the morning. And uh, I work for two hours. He's like, and he's proudly telling me about how hard he works. So he works, he gets up at four. He's like, I don't have an assistant. So he works from four to six, just on the administrative stuff. And then from six to seven, he like goes to the coffee shop, eats breakfast. He's in the office by seven. And then he starts seeing patients around eight. So then he's doing more administrative stuff from seven to eight. He's like, my favorite part of the day is actually the patient care, that's my easiest part of my day. He's like, then after that, I got to do more marketing at night. Then I have to take a dentist out for marketing uh, once a week. He's like, on the weekends, I'm so tired that I sleep from two in the afternoon to six at night. My wife has to wake me up to go to dinner. And he's like, she hates it. And then afterwards, my, my wife said to me, because this guy does really, really well um, financially. But she, and so my wife's like, wow, I mean, he's, they've got a lot of money. I'm like, that's great, but he's miserable. <laughs> like, like I, I don't know if that trade-off is worth it. Uh, no, I mean, I don't know if there's any amount of money that would put me on that treadmill of constant work. I don't know, but I digress. It Let's sounds go terrible, to, doesn't it, Mark? It does. It, it does. No. Like, and, you know, it, you know, I hope he doesn't listen to this, but... <laughs> you, you can imagine his health isn't the best either. No, um, I hope I hope he does listen to this and he gets a toolkit and then goes into flight school and then one-on-one coaching and then he replaces in income. But no, but he's 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 <laughs> proud of it. He's proud that he does everything himself. He's proud of his of this you know very uh, Midwestern like work ethic that you know he works this hard for his family and and I'm like, well, okay, but you know on your deathbed, are you going to look back and be like, oh, I wish I, I spent some more time with my family from two to six on Saturday. <laughs> like yeah. you're sleeping through life tired. I mean, he's got to go to bed at nine. I mean, I don't know. It's crazy. Sometimes he's, he's, he's passes out at eight. Tate's like, wow. laughing. Tate's like, boy, that sounds good. <laughs> yeah. Eight o'clock doesn't sound that bad. <laughs> yeah. See, depending on your stage of life. It just if I could stay asleep for a full night, that would be that would be the good part. That doesn't ever happen again as a parent. <laughs> yeah. You know what else I realized this week speaking of that? When you watch your own kid, it's not babysitting. <laughs> Apparently you can't call it babysitting. I've got to babysit this afternoon and because Allison's going out and it's like <laughs> She's about ready to rip my head off if I call it babysitting again. Apparently, it's just called being a dad. What do you? I would oh, never know, man. I'm I'm afraid to say anything. <laughs> yeah. Your wife listens. She might. Hear I'm afraid you. Allison's listening. She could. I don't yeah. think so. 
Oh, whatever, man. whatever, you know did what? You, happy did, wife, happy life. Whatever she says goes. Yep. For, for those of you that are not watching the video or don't see the video, Tate just looked over his shoulder in fear <laughs> when he said she might be listening. <laughs> <laughs> Tate, right now, yell, it's babysitting. Come on, do it. Do it. No. Do it. Do it. <laughs> <laughs> Come wow. on, man, do it! No, oh man, no, 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 no! no. The, the hazing is it. really <laughs> it's babysitting. Do it. do it. <laughs> Put me on speaker. Put me on speaker. No. All right, let's get to those uh, tips of the week. Eh? <laughs> All right, <laughs> what a be- what a beautiful Tate, segue there, Tate. Let, let's let's start with Tate. Tate, what's your tip of the week? A uh, website, a resource, a book, something actionable. All right, so my, so I was uh, you know thinking about what I wanted to share with everybody this week. And uh, it's actually a website that I use a lot. And um, it's called unitedstateszipcodes.org. And it's nothing fancy, but what it is, is you can go to this website, you can plug in a city, and it will give you the information regarding its zip code. So if you plug in Las Vegas, Nevada, it's going to tell you what the most populated zip code is, the county, you know, the area code and that kind of thing. And the reason I like it is when I'm using, uh, you know, posting ads on Craigslist, I can find zip codes for where I want to post the property. Or if you're following posting domination and uh, Scott teaches us about getting phone numbers for certain areas, you can really zero in on the most populated areas, which will greatly increase the likelihood of you getting a phone number that's in the correct location. So United States zip codes.org, not really exciting, but I love it. It's one of the websites I visit most frequently. All right. I, I love it. I love it. Um, any snarky comments, Eric Peterson? <laughs> nope. He just booked my kid. He just booked my kid. Okay. Um, David Benalis, what's your tip of the week? Uh, I'm going to preface this just like I did last time. Uh, if someone is experiencing anxiety from these tips, all you have to be doing is mailing and marketing. This stuff is the bonus. And now it's for the tip. Um, I finally nailed down my calendar. Um, so my time was the biggest thing I struggled with. And everyone's told it. Mark's told me, Scott told me, Tate's told me. I've probably heard this about 18 times now. It was the 19th time that finally convinced me to really take control of my calendar, you know, schedule in my own me time first, schedule in my power hour, just like Tate does. And then, you know, let the availability come in after that. So I set up some really cool gap, uh, zaps, not gaps, zaps between acuity and Google calendar. And I'm in control of my time. I know exactly what I'm doing Thursday at 2 PM. I love it. So yeah, first thing you want to mail and market, set up your calendar, schedule in your time to write ads, take control of your life, Google calendar. I love it. I love it. Google Calendar. Um, not a lot to rip on there. I mean, not, I, guess we, not, I guess we could say it, it's, it's not a lack, quote. It lacks creativity. <laughs> it could, but you got to go to the basics sometimes. Yeah. It's no quote. It's no quote for sure, Mike Zeno. We're missing you, Mike Zeno. <laughs> um, Eric Peterson. Okay. What's your tip of the week? Um. My tip is lucidchart.com, L-U-C-I-D chart.com. And it's, it's another, um, you know, mind mapping flow chart kind of tool. Um, it's web based, um, but it has, uh, you know, after coming back from boot camp and thinking about swim lanes more, um, there's actually some swim lane templates built into the the um the tool itself um so that's kind of cool as your um if you want to work on your swim lanes digitally uh this makes it really easy um and there's a free version oh very cool lucidchart.com scott todd any anything you want to say no no if it was david saying this i would i would punch (laughs) back but you know since it's it's eric and team sky support all the way man like oh man (laughs) Yeah, I'm, 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 I'm too scared to make any snarky comment. I need, I need, I need see? Dino. He, he, no, man. See, he just McFlyed you. That's what happened. You've been McFlyed. <laughs> I, I, yeah, I mean, oh, I'm, I'm just not going to even get up from the mat. Maybe yeah. next, next week, I'll, I'll be back in shape. But not, oh, not, no. 
Not after yeah, that. He's knocked you down, man. He's knocked you down. David, any any alternatives to lucidchart.com? Um, I, I stick with old school scalpel. Um, scalpel. Yeah, I mean, I like. unless someone else, you know, shows me better, I'm not going to go searching for another one. But, yeah, I mean, I've, I've seen it. I like it. But, well, uh, scalpel's fine for me. Right. And, I, and notice I how we're, we're going around the round table to just try to rip on Eric's tip of the week. <laughs> like, no, everyone I, else's tip of the week, like, good tip. Like, <laughs> like I'm like egging the round table on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tate, I do, do you like I do like, like draw, I do like draw. I like draw.io. I do like draw.io. Is it free? <laughs> Is it free? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I like But I do like Lucid too. I like I like draw.io and I like Scapel. Those are my two, but uh I'm to be honest, I've never seen this one. So I'm definitely I mean, I'd check it out for sure. <laughs> I can't really right. eat on it too much because, you know, what I feel like he did is he went to Google and he searched, you know, mind mapping software and then he just found the first. <laughs> oh. Oh. oh, wow. That one for you, Mark. I got you. I appreciate it. <laughs> By the way, again, the Team Tate cup. It tastes so good now, Tate. Oh, gosh. That was like Electric a spoonful of sugar. Hmm. <laughs> 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 Scott Todd, what's your tip of the week? Mark, have you ever lost contact with somebody that like you really, really like want to get back involved with, you know? Well, um, check out this website, yeah. Smirnoff as a service, Smirnoff as a service.com and check it out. They will, they will send to somebody a nice bottle of Smirnoff and they will include a handwritten note you know, lose someone in the sales, uh, you know, in the sales shuffle. Look, it's like 25, 30 bucks. So the, the value has to be there. You can't do it for everybody, but what an original idea. That's pretty cool. That's a good tip. That, yeah, I, what, see? I, I don't know though, but like, I don't know about sending alcohol. Well, if you've developed rapport with someone and you've had a few jokes about drinking, which I like to test the waters and see what they're comfortable with that. Um, so yeah, I mean, send anyone a bottle, like that bottle is going to stick around for at least a month and they're going to think of you every single time they see it. Good tip. I like it. It says sales opportunity to gone full. Ice them. Yeah. I yeah, see. I like it. I, I think it's cool. I like it. Yeah. There you go. Um, and we don't need to go around into everybody else's. No, we don't need because, to do that. No. You know, you know, yeah, it's, it's not relevant. Yeah. It's not relevant. <laughs> Great <laughs> tip, Scott Todd. <laughs> Thanks, Mark. So I thought uh, this roundtable was great, but before I, I you know, sign off, I've got to give my tip of the week. So um, I saw this and I thought, kind of, it kind of, it kind of applies to what we were talking about. Kind of, um, it is lazy, a manifesto. So I'll send the link here. It's on YouTube. Um, and I think he's got a book. Uh, it's from Tim Kreider, who uh, Tim Ferriss liked it so much, he actually had Tim Kreider on his podcast. Uh, but he kind of talks about the merit of not being so busy, 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 which, um, you know, and kind of like, hey, let's, let's get out of this busy trap, right? Um, so I thought, you know, this could be, this could be good. Um, so check that out. No comments. Well, I can't. Well, we have to watch it. Yeah, I mean, I like, come on. Like, oh, look at that. What, okay. What a, just, you what know a what? perfect. What there, a perfect. Guess, that's what I'm using. It's a, it's a link. YouTube videos. Yeah. That's <laughs> it, man. I got, I will have my YouTube video next week. Eric, don't worry, man. <laughs> we have cracked the code. <laughs> you can't I mean, go wrong is, with the books either. This is <laughs> This is kind of like a la this is kind of like a lazy uh, tip of the week, I think. Until you watch it, and it might be Until like the next it. Airtable tip. It could be. You know what? Thank you, David. Yeah, as the person that found Airtable, I think I've I've got like, you know, a tremendous amount of goodwill built up just on Airtable alone. Well, I think I think for us to do this justice, we need to like pause the, uh, the podcast right now. The problem is we need to take thirteen minutes. Yeah, and then we'll come back and you know evaluate it. Look, if you have the book uh, "Tools of Titans," 
Tim Kreider is in there. So I think you guys are going to like it. Anyways. All right. Uh, I'm going to watch it. I want to thank all the geeky listeners for spending time with us on our very fun, jovial roundtable podcasts. And um, just thank you. And, and if you're enjoying the podcast, the biggest and best compliment you can give us is just doing three little things. You got to subscribe. You got to rate. You got to review the podcast. Send us a screenshot of your review to support at thelandgeek.com. We're going to send you for free the $97 passive income launch kit. And if you want, maybe even a Team Eric shirt with a K. E-R-I-K. Just kidding. We'll never do that, by the way. <laughs> wow. <We'll, laughs> Eric, I'm back up, man. Back All right. Up. All right. So, uh, you know, I, I kid because I love, but I want to I thank, uh, you know, all the roundtable people, um, David Banalis, Scott Todd, Tate Litchfield, and of course... Eric, shot not pro Peterson <laughs> for being on uh, and thank the listeners. And should we do it? Scott, you want to lead us? Mark. Let's go. Let's go. One, one, two, two three. three. Let freedom ring. Who's dragging it out so long? It should be quick. It should just be let freedom ring. Let just freedom ring. Yeah. Just <laughs> Yeah. Oh, but I had a, I, I had a <laughs> I had a maple donut yesterday, Scott. It was good. Did you really? All right. Was it so? Vegan? So speaking of vegan donuts, I I got like another thing of vegan donuts at Whole Foods. By the way, Whole Foods prices have gone down. I'm super huh. excited. There's like one like a block from my house, but um, you know what? The second go around wasn't as good as the first. I, and I think that just goes to show like the law of diminishing returns. Like that first experience of vegan donuts, amazing. The second one. Not so great. Never as good as the first time. It's, n- it's never as good as the first time. But <laughs> the anticipation of getting the vegan donuts again was even as good as the first time. Like, oh, I can't wait to get these donuts. Because like the, the second time I went, they weren't there. And then I had to go back. And then they were there. It's like, oh, they're here. I win. And then I started eating them. And then I started beating myself up and fat shaming myself. Why are you eating vegan donuts? And then I started voxing David Banalis and cursing him <laughs> through a voxer. Why are you doing this to me? I'm 46. A man <laughs> my age should not be eating a full box of vegan donuts. <laughs> but whatever. Uh, I love how this podcast devolves so quickly. So quickly. <laughs> I don't know. Tate, w- would you rather eat a bowl of mosquitoes or a bag <laughs> or, or a box of <laughs> Vegan donuts. Yeah. You know, I hate... Hey, he's got Ronald's Donuts in Vegas, so uh, he's not going to hate. Yeah, I'm going to go with the mosquitoes on there. Oh, oh, oh so man. healthy. Oh. Eric, Eric Peterson's like, they can't even deep fry the food enough here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Eric, 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 Eric's getting all his pastries with carnivals. Dude, he's like, like having a bacon wrap fried donut. That sounds well, good to me. That That's good. the way they do it here. That's right. De- Listen, man, deep fried vegan is just fried dirt. That's all it is. Oh, oh. the torture, the torture. Uh, when, when, so I, when I see David and I bring him his vegan donuts, it's just going to be like a, a bag of potting soil. I'll be like, hey, what's the difference? <laughs> yes. Oh, man. Scott, when you come out here, I'm going to take you to Mavericks, which is like my favorite coffee place. Honest to God, they have the best vegan uh, chocolate chip cookies. They're amazing. I, I tell you, I'm I'm all in on the it's vegan dirt. bakeries. It's not it's dirt. dirt, man. Oh, I mean maple maple donuts, so good. So I think good. even Eric Peterson would be like, you know, based on your your food choices of of like chain restaurants, you've lost a lot of credibility. What are you Eric? talking about? See, hey, let let's just see who gets to Look, go to Eric, the Columbia Eric restaurant. No, so you know, <laughs> so let's see, let's see who gets to go to the Columbia restaurant in October. And who doesn't? I'm going. I'm to sorry. The there's not, oh, Mark, you're going, but I'm sorry. There's not enough seats for everybody. I'm going. Oh. Sorry. <laughs> oh, Can I man. RSVP? <laughs> no. They don't serve vegan that. there. Oh. 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 Don't worry. I, I, do, I, okay. I do seafood at boot camps. It's all good. <laughs> I, I eat seafood too. Okay, ready? One, two, three. Let freedom ring. I think we're done. Yeah. All right. Thanks, guys. <laughs>